All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our fifth edition BCBA task list series with F6, functions of problem behavior. Functions are probably the first thing you ever learned as a either, either a technician or an ABA therapist outside of maybe reinforcement and punishment. But as with everything else, we don't want to skip on anything. You need to know the whole task list and you need to be fluent in the whole task list. So although this is a very easy portion of the task list and one you probably know by heart, still review it, still make sure you have that maintenance of this skill, of the knowledge of functions that maybe you haven't worked on in a while. So with that said, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials and let's get going. So functions of problem behavior. Behavior is determined meaning it happens for a reason. It has an impact on the environment, it changes the environment, and behavior typically happens to gain something or to remove something. These are what we call our functions. So you can refer to the function as the reason the behavior occurs. What does the learner gain? What are they getting rid of? What effect is the learner's behavior having on the environment? And of course, we have our four main functions. So we have escape or avoidance. Now, as a BCBA, you need to know the difference between escape and avoidance. Typically in practice, we use escape and avoidance interchangeably, but there is a difference. Then we have obtain social attention. We have obtain a tangible, and then we have automatic or sensory. The technical term is automatic. I mean, automatic versus socially mediated. With socially mediated, there's another person involved. Automatic, there's nobody else involved. The consequence is created and administered by the person themselves. There's no second party. However, it's often referred to as sensory these days, and that's fine. But you need to know these are interchangeable. So with that said, let's start with escape and avoidance. Escape or avoidance, they act to terminate, remove, or prevent a stimulus. Avoidance behavior works to prevent the presentation of a stimulus. Meaning, the stimulus in question is not currently in the environment or presented to the learner. So, for example, if mom says it's time for bath and the child runs away, they're trying to prevent the bath. They're avoiding bath time. Now, escape terminates or removes a stimulus that is already present. So, if you rip up a worksheet on your desk or Using the bath example, if you're already taking the bath and you try to jump out of the bathtub or drain the water or throw things, you're escaping the stimulus that is already present. Is this being specific? It is, but that's what the BCBA exam is all about, being as specific as possible. So they're used interchangeably very frequently, but as a BCBA or a BCABA, you have to know the difference and work on using them correctly. So if you're trying to identify the function in practice, if it's escape, say escape. If it's avoidance, say avoidance. No one's going to fault you if you use them interchangeably, but it's it's just good practice and it's more specific. And whenever we're defining behavior, we want to be as specific as possible. So of course, the function also tells us the maintaining consequence, which is important for things like extinction. The maintaining consequence for escape or avoidance Maintain behavior is, of course, the removal or prevention of the stimulus. So when the learner is successful at escaping or avoiding, that is what maintains the behavior. Moving on to attention. So we're gaining attention, arguably the most common function, especially if you work with really early learners who are always seeking out attention. It can be very easy to give attention to behaviors you don't want to give attention to. And that means attention can be positive, quote unquote attention, you know, praise, rewards, hugs. Attention can also be negative, reprimands, threats. These are all types of attention. Think about, let's say, a group of middle school boys who are misbehaving in class, regardless of the teacher yelling at them or telling them to go to the principal's office or giving them detention. The behavior seems to not change or it even increases. So attention can either be what we consider good attention or even 
bad attention. Attention is just attention. Attention-based behavior is socially mediated, and the maintaining consequence, of course, is receiving the, the desired attention. So if the behavior produces attention, they've gotten what they want, that what that's what maintains the behavior in the future. Now, tangible-based behavior is behavior that gains items. So something you can you can you can hold, you can touch, you can manipulate. Money, food, toys, clothes, video games. A lot of adult-based behavior is tangible related, especially for things like money and food and clothes. So items that you can manipulate and hold are considered tangibles. So consider the difference between a tangible and an attention-based behavior. With an attention-based behavior, you're not gaining an item. You're not gaining a thing. You're gaining that social attention. Tangible-based, you're actually gaining that certain item. You're receiving or getting that item. So the maintaining consequence, of course, is receiving the desired item. This one is probably the most straightforward because when you think about it, when you get the tangible, that's what's maintaining the tangible-based behavior. And then automatic, or what many now call sensory. This is behavior that creates a feeling. So the behavior feels good or produces its own consequence. It's called automatic. You want to be very careful with automatic and in, in identifying automatic as the function of the behavior. My advice is to be sure that the other three functions are it. Because automatic maintained behavior is very difficult to treat compared to the other ones because that consequence comes from something internal. And that makes it very difficult to punish it, to put on an extinction. It's very challenging to change automatic-based behavior. So automatic is commonly referred to as sensory in our these day, days and times. And then it's when you consider socially mediated, we've got a second person involved. In automatic, you don't have to have a second person. So somebody can be in their room all alone engaging in automatic-based behavior. Self-stimulation, for example, does not require a second person to create that feeling. And behaviors are often considered automatic if they occur when no escape is needed, when all tangibles are present, and when attention is available. In other words, someone has everything they want. They still engage in that behavior. Likely, more than likely, it could be automatic-based. And the consequence is the feeling from that behavior. Pretty straightforward item. Their functions, right? Again, probably the first thing you learned especially if you work as an RBT or worked as an RBT, you deal with functions day in and day out, but we still want to go through them. We still want to constantly remind ourselves of our foundations of what is the most important thing with the behavior. It's the function. So you've got to start there. Like and subscribe for all of our videos. We have three BCB videos a week. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.